God bless you today, for today is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to read Psalms chapter 103 from the Expository Study Bible, so the notes included, King James Version. And as always, we ask God in the mighty name of Jesus to please bless us with the revelation of this word so we can grow in the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and also that this word will be hid in our hearts. The word of God, as he has said, is the treasure. The treasure house is the Bible. Open up that Bible. There's a treasure of God. What is it? Knowledge. The knowledge of what? The knowledge of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. What it what it what it really means? Wisdom. What wisdom? The word of God is wisdom. That is the wisdom. All right? And these are treasures that we can have. Endless, endless amounts. God will never turn us away. We can have all that we want. God is so merciful, so loving. He offers us such bounty of blessings. But it's up to us to keep our faith correct. And when we do so, we can live correct. You know, it's one thing to say. It's another thing to do. We know that our faith is correct when we are living correct, when we think Christ-like, we speak Christ-like, we act Christ-like. That's when we know that our faith is correct. Our faith isn't correct when we think with the flesh, we talk in the flesh, we act in the flesh. But as always, I've got good news. All we must do is repent which means to turn the other way. Repent from our sin, and Jesus Christ is faithful and true to be right there to take us in. Thank God Almighty. So, verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The subject of this psalm is redemption. It begins with thanksgiving unto the Lord for all that he has done, as it always does. In essence, it refers to the benefits of the cross. See, why it is always God's order to come to him with thanksgiving is because when you thank him for what he has done for you, you are acknowledging what he has done for you. Okay? You are being in acknowledgement of what he has done. All right? Bless the Lord, hold my soul, forget not all his benefits. Just speaking of his benefits, endless benefits. While Christ is a source of all the benefits, the cross is the means. Who forgives all your iniquities, sins. Who heals all your diseases. The Lord alone can forgive sin. The Lord alone can heal. You know, people will put faith in a slogan on a bumper sticker. A slogan on a t-shirt. Or any a slogan anywhere. They'll put their faith in a doctor. They'll put their faith in a, in, a, in a ribbon. But they will not put their faith in the one who is able to heal from all things. They will not put their faith in the Lord. They'll put their faith in an alien before they put their faith in the, in the Lord. And that is the tragedy of it all. Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? The word redeem means to purchase something back that has been lost through death, default, or failure to pay. Jesus did so by the means of the cross. His blood was the only price that could settle the debt of sin, period. Nothing else could have did it. Nothing. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The eagles was used by the Holy Spirit as an example. Once a year, eagles cast off their old feathers and receive new ones. Therefore, despite their age, they have the continual look of youthfulness. Likewise, upon the substance of Christ and the individual becoming a new creature with, the, with guilt of sin removed, the redeemed one, one always has a youthful spirit. So, we will age, our physical bodies will continue to age due to, due to the sin, you know. But our spirit can remain youthful. And that is with joy, peace, 
and love. And that is the Lord's way. The Lord wants us to live a spirit filled life of victory, of joy and blessings. All right. That's the Lord's way for us. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. The word oppressed has to do with Satan's heavy hand upon the human race. So unsaved people can be possessed where a demon literally enters into you and takes possession. Saved people cannot be, they cannot be uh, possessed. It's, a, it, it's impossible because you are in Christ, Christ is in you. Can a Christ enter into Jesus? Blasphemy. But we can be oppressed. So demons, they can't enter us, but they can stand next to us and oppress us. So the word oppressed has to do with Satan's heavy hand upon the human race. The Lord alone can deliver those who are oppressed by the devil. He does through our faith in him and what he has done for us at the cross. So he oppresses. We look to Jesus and Jesus with, with the greatest of ease removes that oppression. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Natural intelligence can recognize divine acts, but only the spiritual mind does God make known his ways. All right, that's very, very insightful right there. It is a spiritual thing to know God's ways. Remember, God is a spirit, not flesh. So the things of the flesh are sinful. Things of the spirit are of God. All right, that's why everything is spiritual. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger. Oh, bless bless the name of the Lord. The Lord is merciful and gracious and slow to anger. Thank God Almighty for that. And plenteous in mercy. Plenteous in mercy. And this in the following verses, God outlines his dealings with Israel while in the wilderness and even in the land, his dealings are thusly with us. He will not always uh, shine. Neither will he keep his anger forever. Irrespective of what has happened, if the believer will humble himself and confess his wrongdoing, the Lord will discontinue his abolishment and cool his anger. God does not hold grudges. God is not like us. God's perfect. All we have to do is repent. And it's done. It's washed away. It's forgotten. It does not exist. God doesn't keep our sins in a record book. And we say, and we come, and we, and we repent, and then later on in the future, God will say, oh, let me look at my record book here. Okay, well, we got this sin back in 1995, and we got this sin in right here. No. If you repent, true repent, repentance, all is forgiven. It does not exist. It's as if it did not happen. Can you accept this? Because that's the way it is. He has not dealt with us after our, our sins, nor reward us according to our iniquities. This is the reason God takes a stern attitude towards believers who will not show mercy, nor be quick to forgive. He expects us to conduct ourselves toward others as he has conducted himself towards us. So you must listen. If you can't forgive, then you, you won't be forgiven. If you're slow to forgive... Do you want God to be slow to forgive you? Of course not. So get your, get your mind right, which is to get your mind on the Lord and have forgiveness. For as, he, for as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is mercy toward them who fear him. This refers to unlimited mercy, but with a condition. The condition is that we must fear him. If we do, there will be less iniquities. So what does it mean to fear God? It means fear him because you understand who he is, God Almighty, the great I am, the Alpha and the Omega, the Father. Understanding who he is and what he can do, what he has done and what he can do and will do. So a healthy, righteous fear. So this isn't a this isn't the kind of fear where you go outside and you're fearful. This is a this is a righteous fear. Knowing who God is, respecting that, acknowledging that. All right. 
As far as the east is from the west, so far as he has removed our transgressions from us. This is equivalent to blotting out our sins. It is impossible to bring the east and the west together. So it is impossible to bring forgiver, so it is impossible to bring the forgiven sinners forgiven sins together. This divine this divine fact gives to those who believe in a peace which nothing can destroy. So right here, as, as we just talked about, the once you ask forgiveness, it is done, gone, done. All right. Like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them who fear him. As a result, he has great mercy on us, for he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. God remembers what man forgot, our infirmities. Man remembers what God forgot, our sins. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. As a flower is beautiful for a short time, so is man. But then, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place therefore shall know it no more. As a flower blooms and then shortly is gone, so many passes away. One cannot tell where the flower had been, and one can little tell where a man has been, irrespective of how great he formerly was. But the mercy of the Lord is from, from everlasting to everlasting upon them who fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children. The sense of this verse is, has to do with the previous verses. There is no dependability in man, but there is a great dependability in the mercy of the Lord. To such as keep his covenant and to those who remember his commandments to do them. God will not and in fact cannot show his mercy to those who flout, who flout his word. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. This will come to fruition in the kingdom age. Then the Lord's prayer will be answered. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Bless the Lord you as angels who excel in strength, who do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. All the righteous angels praise him, and should and so should we, especially considering that we have experienced redemption, which angels have never known. Bless you, the Lord, all his hosts, you ministries of his who do his pleasure. Angels are called here ministers, meaning that they carry out his will according to his pleasure. Bless the Lord in all his works in the places of his dominion. Blessed the Lord, O my soul. The psalm ends as it begins with the abolishment for us to never kneel in reverence and respect with an abolishment for us to ever kneel in reverence and respect to the Lord of glory, who has given us good all things. Despite the fact that we are poor, frail, flawed, and fallen, human beings made of dust. My God in heaven. the God, God is good, isn't he? God is good. And once again, we'll go back to that fear of God. If you, if you were to be taken in front of the Lord right now, what would you do? Fall to that face, fall to that face out of respect and honor, acknowledgement in front of God Almighty. Pay him his reverence. And, you know, we should we should we should be thanking him always, always thanking him for what he has done, what he has done, is doing and will do. He saved us for those that would believe. From a life, from forever, forever, in a lake made of fire. So not only will you would you go through when you go through life without Christ, it's a miserable life. I don't care what someone portrays; they're miserable. Believe me, life without Christ is most miserable. And you go through life miserable, and then you die, go to hell, and then you get thrown in a lake of fire in the future where you burn forever and ever. That is what you're being saved from. The only way you can have a life of victory, peace and joy and holiness and righteousness is through Christ. That's it. That's the only way. He is the light, the way and the, and the truth. There is no other way. And he's worth thanking worth praising, worth worshiping. God is good, is he not? So blessed be the Lord. We thank God Almighty. So God bless you. And no matter how long things may have been going wrong, that doesn't matter. Today, is the day the Lord has made.
And remember, with the Lord, it doesn't matter if you have been with the Lord for 50 years or the individual who was with the Lord for, an, for, for, for one minute. Think of it. You can have an individual who's been saved for 80 years and an individual who got saved and one minute later died and you both will go to heaven forever. Even though you were saved for 80 years and they were saved for a minute, even if they were saved for a second, if someone got saved and one second later they died, they would go to heaven. One second of their life. Tell me that's not that. Tell me that's not mercy. So now let me be very clear. If you think you can live the life you want to live in sin. And then think that when it's your time to die and you hope that you're aware of it. So you can say, oh, God, please forgive me. Well, I would not play a game with God. I would not play that game with God. So if the devil tries to tell you, just wait till you're about to die, and then you can say you're sorry and accept Jesus as your Savior. Well, he's going to tell you that because he knows you're going to die with no chance of repenting. So don't play that game. That's a deadly game. Your soul's on the line. Your soul is on the line at any moment. It could be gone just like that. Remember, the devil is forever roaring like a lion, seeking who he may devour. All right? It could be your time. The devil could be devouring your soul next. No one's promised tomorrow. So today is the day the Lord has made. Give your, give your life to Christ today. Don't hesitate. Don't let the devil lie to you. Your soul is on the line. Do you want to live in peace? Do you want to live in joy? Do you want to live in victory? Do you want to live being, being, um, what's the word? Being content in all things? Well, you can, but it's only through Jesus. All right. God bless you.